Oh, yes. This is the Hardcore Marketing Show. I'm Casey Cheshire, your host for this epic journey. And today's show, sponsored by Cheshire Impact, on a mission to help people maximize their use of Pardot and Salesforce. CheshireImpact.com. Bam. There it is. All we got to do is hit one button. It's a marvel of technology. Love it. <laughs> so, hey guys, I am so excited to introduce my guest today. He is an entrepreneur. He's a marketing leader. So much time, decades worth of experience in the marketing industry, in the software industry, um, technology as well. We're going to talk about all these things, how marketing, technology, they converge. They do all sorts of crazy things. He's been at large companies. He's been at startups. He's held VP of marketing roles and he's, you know, senior level mo uh, roles at places like, I don't know, Salesforce you've heard of, right? So all these places. And now he's the CEO at Envato Solutions. Christopher Doran, welcome, sir. Hey, Casey. How you doing today? Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, I wanted to get on this podcast with you and hash out marketing strategy. You're a tech leader as well. I respect your team and everything you guys are doing. So I wanted to like get us out here and just crush some things. So I got, I got something to hand to you here. Okay. Ugh, that's heavy. <sighs> okay. Here you go. You got it. Uh -oh. Thor's hammer. All right. There you go. All right. Take oh, Thor's hammer. Got it. Smash for me. Let's do this. Some kind of marketing myth, bogus strategy, misconception, set the record straight once and for all. Yeah, Casey, well, really appreciate it. Hey, before I dig into that, I've got so many to talk about today. I hope, we, I hope you got a couple hours. Uh, but really, first off, I want to thank you for having me on today. I, I really respect you guys at Cheshire and the work you've been putting in over there for, for years and years now. Uh, you know, as we're, we play in the same space here at Envato Solutions, yeah. but I you know, really respect you guys and, and appreciate the work you've, you've been doing. So love the idea that we can swap some ideas today, um, get the brass packs. So yeah, I mean, as, as you know, Envato Solutions is a Salesforce shop that really focuses on making marketers successful with Salesforce, right? So right. we talk a lot about strategy and we also talk a lot about Salesforce. Um, and so we, we get into some pretty interesting conversations. And, and my, my uh, you know, I've been in this space for about 16 years now. And, you know, my job as a consultant quite often is helping people figure things out. So we're up against myths every day. And so I've got two that I really want to bring to the table. The first one is that, you know, leads, 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 more does not equal better. Let's get that right on the table, right? People, we, we just, they, the amount of money we find people spending on pay-per-click and inbound and this and that can be just outrageous, right? So you have to spend a lot of time just talking more about not just inbound, but what are you doing with what you got? You know, we had a client the other day that was spending you know, twenty, over twenty thousand dollars a month just on inbound. They have nothing really going on on the the rest of the funnel there because what they really wanted to do was bring a report to their CEO. Be like, look at all these leads we're generating. You know, right. Google in the background saying, "Awesome, cut a check for us." But we really wanted to broaden the dialogue uh, about more than just inbound. So huge myth there. Would would love to get your perspective on what you're seeing there at Cheshire. Yeah, man. Um Man, I wrote this phrase down that you said, what are you doing with what you've got? I mean, what a phrase. Like if we could ask ourselves one thing right now, it's like, what are we doing with what we've got? So focused, and I've been guilty of this. You focus on, you know, creating the new pipeline, you creating the new, but you know what? You can create a new pipeline with the people you've already got too. And all those yeah. stats always show it's cheaper. Well, you know, and honest look, we live in really interesting times, right? Budgets, layoffs, furloughs, it's going on. Um, we all have to make do with what we got, right. <laughs> you know? Like, what do you, you've got these lists, you've got people, you've got those leads you got in the previous month. What are you doing with them? How are you talking to them? How are you engaging them? Um, this is across the board. Every client we're talking to right now is like, let's, you know, they're hunkering down to budgets. Let's talk about how to be strategic with what you have. Um, and you know, look, you should be doing that during normal times. These are just extraordinary times. Um, you know, now more than ever, we need to have dialogues like this on let's optimize and plan and be strategic on your past investments, not just something more in the top. Right. Right. It reminds me of that, that poker uh, phrase, like fit or fold, you know, if you, it's either a good hand and you keep it or it's a bad one, you fold it. 
right away. But I, I see people doing that with leads too, like fit or flush, you could say, right? You know, they're either ready to buy right now or I flush them out the toilet and, um, or they go into la la land in my CRM and I never do anything with them. And even as marketers, we, we know we could nurture those kind of people and, and bring them into the fold. And maybe it's a six month sales cycle. Like we, there's so many more things to do than just if they don't buy right away. I mean, it's the worst habit, but we shouldn't adopt that in marketing, you know, just cause maybe sales has that. Yeah. You know, you bring up a great point, you know, philosophically the way I like to think about it and talk to clients about it is really think about not if they're going to buy your product. It's a matter of when, right? Oh, yeah. So it might be, everyone loves to talk to the, you know, the folks are going to buy right now. They're kind of no painters. But look, let's think two years out. How are you building a relationship with these people so that they will buy two years from now, right? You're top of mind. You're, you're building a relationship with them, right? So um, the more you think about it that way instead of now, 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 the more you're thinking about, you know, those pipelines that will come with time. So this is where the beauty of, of what we do and, and we and Vato Solutions really focus on is how do you build those relationships with, you know, automatically and building content and content strategies um, those are the kind of dialogues that we love having with customers. And really, that's a big myth because, well, no, look, it's a short-term win to talk about, look, I got all these leads in, but it's a longer-term play, but much more strategic in nature when you're thinking about, how am I going to build this long-term relationship out with this client? Because it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Right. And that, I mean, that ties into the ABM concept too. I mean, the whole idea of ABM mm. is you're going after someone, but you can't just instantly go after them. Your, your spammy message on LinkedIn is not going to make them immediately buy you. It's a slow, steady nurturing process on the ABM side. So yep. like if you have to, you have to plan it that long. I remember we were talking internally about maybe we should have like a three month campaign. It's like, no, we've got to extend this to six months. We got to give this a shot. We're not going to try to race in the door with people. Yeah. And, and to your point there, look, the bigger the price point, the longer the lead time on yeah. it. Right. I mean, you know, when I, when I was at Salesforce, you know, and actually, you know, I ran the Dell account for them um, for wow. a year and it was like, look, we're not thinking, we're not thinking about six months horizons. We're talking about like, what, where are we going to be in a year to two years out with this account? Right. right. And the same thing with ABM and the strategies you and I love to bring to people. It's like, look, this isn't going to happen overnight. The bigger the price point, the longer you got to play the long game. But whether it's sales calling people or you're sending them value-added information, you know, and they're in a long-term campaign, that's really what it's all about. And you know, look, the challenge you and I and, and our clients see out there from a marketing perspective is making sure that leadership understands that, that, fills, you know, that philosophy, that you're looking to build that long-term relationship because, you know, look, we're all guilty in, in the sense that marketing is trained you know, their executive leadership to think about leads, leads, leads. I want reports on leads. Well, let's talk about the longer game here, right? So there's a huge educational component that we need to think about when we report up and managing our leadership and, and, and our clients' leadership, like teach them what's going on, not just, you know, um, you, you got to mold this piece of clay to make sure that they understand your strategy. Um, you're not just putting uh, on leads. It's actually, yeah. you're thinking more cohesively. You know, it's a really good point too, with the, with the ABM side, um, if sale, if, if the sales mindset is fit or fold, it's the close, close, close. And if you're not, I mean, if they're not thinking long-term, then sales just thinking long-term doesn't magically fix it. I mean, that's where I'm seeing like the ABE, the accounts based everything. It's not just marketing trying to change the methodology. It has to be everybody, right? You can't just in a silo come up with a better strategy. If, say, if the other half of your equation is not doing it, it may still not work. Well, you know, and it's, it's funny you bring that up because it's like, okay, if account-based marketing or is account-based selling, it's account-based togetherness, right? <laughs> it's really not yeah. just one piece of the pie. You guys should be meeting every week in you know, two weeks talking about how are we working together, right? If you don't have sales and marketing at the table together, figuring this out because it's not either or, it's, it's we're working on this together, right? And, um, you know, uh, it's, it's, you know, how are we, how are we rowing the boat together to get you where y'all want to go? Right. Right. Yeah. Gotta be that. Would you rename ABM to anything else? If you, if you, if you were the, the king of, yeah, I was branding? trying to think of that. I was trying to, trying to think of something. Um, yeah, I don't know what it, maybe, maybe we could you know, change it. Maybe this is our thought leadership session. Maybe you and I right. could just like, boom, we can nail it here and just like grow up. Maybe the myth about ABM, it's really a, the, you know, Count based, and we don't want to say selling, right? It's not just them, right? It's marketing. It's sub marketing or something. I don't know. Count based marketing. 
marketing. <laughs> right. You know, I've definitely heard, um, you know, Salesforce and other folks talk about the, the everything, A-B-E, but then it's like Abe. Now it's the person's mm-hmm. name. So that it's interesting. Um, I don't know. But whether we have a name for it or not, I think you, the point is, is clear. It's like you got, you got to have the alignment there too, you know? Yeah, and, and when we're working with clients, we really like to lay it out on the table. And if you don't have sales and marketing in the room together, we're not doing our job, right? It is, is a you know, marketing Salesforce consultancy. It's like, look, we all need to be in here. Get them in there. This is not going to be successful for only targeting to the head of marketing. We need who's your peer? How are we bringing this together to develop that strategy um, you know, as a team? Yeah, it's so true, man. How, how do you balance that, right? Because we know you still need to get you need to get leads in. Otherwise, you get fired because sales still going to be looking right. for some kind of flow, but then you know that there's value at the back end. How do you balance that? What kind of strategy do you take? Yeah, no, you're a great point. Like you just can't say, Hey, guess what? We're not getting any more inbound leads and I'm okay yeah. with that. <laughs> you should be, you should be too. It's, it's going to be fine. Um, we really focus and we're doing a lot of work these days. I don't know about you at Cheshire, but in Mata, we're doing a lot of work around metrics, 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 yeah. and really look at the full funnel and helping people really define the stages, right? Because if we're doing this right, we are talking about how leads are moving from stage to stage and conversion rates and, you know, uh, momentum, how leads are moving through and how fast, right? So let's talk about the whole picture and not just the top, but how, you know, sales and marketing are moving them from funnel, you know, to stage to stage. And we love building dashboards around you know, conversion rates and uh, momentum and how fast your, your funnel velocity is, you know, that's really important because now we could really educate, talk to people more about the broader picture, not just like, Hey, Google sent us you know, 2000 leads. And well, the truth is, you know, 90% of them suck. Mm-hmm. Um, but we don't, we just sweep that under the rug. Let's talk about really metrics that matter. What do you guys see out there? What do you, how are you, um, you know, dealing with that? What's your recommendation? Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I point this out for people, uh, I ask you, how do you balance your time? And you took it to the highest level of like the goal of like, what are you trying to get to in the metric and in a common metric, not just your marketing metric. Cause I think you're right. I mean, back to the even original conversation, it can't be, um, we're, you know, we're trying to fix this problem and still have the same goals we had in the beginning. You know, you can't still be dying on the hill of the MQL trying to encourage people to get, more business elsewhere. It just doesn't work. Um, so yeah, I, I love the idea of yeah. like um, pipeline contribution and measuring uh, pipeline. Just the other day we were having a conversation, you know, what is sales's goal? Okay, cool. What's their win rate? And this was a, a great conversation I had with uh, Alon Wax. I don't know if you've met him yet. Uh, I can introduce mm-hmm. you. And he, he's just like a net dashboard ninja and he was talking, okay, what's the conversion rate sales needs? Okay. Oh no, they usually get 30%, 50%, whatever it is. Okay, great. You're, you're 500K times that. You need to create 700, you know, whatever it is in pipeline together. So, okay, that's our goal is to create pipeline, you know? And so then yep. the other metrics can be helpful for us directionally to figure out how do we get more pipeline. But otherwise, like, let, mm-hmm. let's look at that number because that's a real number. And then the ones that convert, of course, as well. But I like that, that combined metric, not just the marketing fancy you know, spirit finger metrics we used to use. Yeah. Well, look, you know, some of our best engagements have been around, we're actually going another step further, even like talking about like, well, what's your market share? What's your average selling price, right? Like how many deals do we need? And what's, you know, how many, how many unique customers do you have? And what's your ASP? And let's back into that, right? Okay. You have a $24,000 price point and you have, you know, 2000 customers. We need to get you at assuming that price point, we need to get you another, you know, 500 customers in the next, uh, you know, the next six months and sales typically generate 60%. Let's say marketing's on the hook for 40%. How do you do that? Let's talk about that. And even better, yeah. let's talk about your customer, customer, customer acquisition, right? Let's, what's the take? Because this at the end of the day, this is a numbers game, right? It's a business case. Well, okay. I could get lead, more top of funnel leads in the door for, you know, for a qualified lead, let's say it costs yeah. me $100, and then in my conversion rates, let's model this out. Let's start with the model. I think that's kind of what you're getting there, you know, to yeah. there is this is, this is a number, and let's, let's figure that out, and let's check out the conversion rates through the funnel. Um, you know, really connecting marketing and the technology is, is really the, the, the beauty of, of what we do. Would you use that model to then help you figure out where you should spend your time? Because, you know, if you could generate pipe from – you know, net new versus existing, maybe that would, that would show you 
where you can spend your time. I think this, this takes it out of the guesswork area, right? Instead of being like, well, I heard on a podcast, 80, 20, 80% you're existing and 20% new. Like you would calculate it out in a model to say, well, this is our success with the existing. This is our success with new together. It equals this pipeline that we need for the sales team, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, yeah, please don't take that, uh, you know, look, serious decisions. I'm sure you're familiar with that. They've got their, you know, pipeline contribution models for sales, the marketing, I guess that's what I was alluding to for 40%. You know, the more mature companies are, um, you know, gets down to about 20%, right? Because they have huge market share. That was, you know, early stage company. They're typically looking to generate 40% of the pipeline. Um, But yeah, look, we're a small company. You're a small company. We talk to a lot of small companies. Um, You know, time is one of the big constraints we're up against, right? Budget for sure, especially in these times. But time, where we spend our, our, you know, where's the biggest bang for the buck? And yes, you're absolutely right. If I know these kind of activities do a better job of moving folks to the, that, you know, through that conversion rate, absolutely. Like what's working and what's not. Um, anytime, you know, we get metrics, the, the better. And, and that's why we love like, okay, let's dive into this, this data, you know, some sort of, again, the most fun engagements for us, like we have actually data analysts, like let's figure out your metrics. Let's figure out how we should spend our time. Let's not just up against the wall, let's make educated decisions. And the more you go back to changing and showing up and, and talking about marketing, that data is invaluable to go to the top of the chain with the CEO, say, look, time out. I don't want to talk about leads anymore. We've actually built out a model here for everything you're doing, you know, cost, cost for customer acquisition, the average selling price, all these things. This is what we've learned. Here's what you should do moving forward. Um, it's a no-brainer investment, right? If I know that, um, you know, I'm going to ask you to invest one hundred fifty thousand dollars, but I'm going to get you two hundred, you know, a hundred million net new revenue. What's the problem here, right? I've proved it out with your own data. That's it's a no-brainer business decision. Yeah, there's some power to having or immense power to having the data just to be able to show. Look, politics aside, by the way, I hate big corporate politics, but if you can have some numbers, you can show. Like, look, it's not my idea, your idea. Let's just let's just do this. This is going to help us grow. Yeah. Here's the model. It's proven. Let's do more of it. If you if you can, or we take some guesses on the model even, but just have something that you can point at. It's more than just you know hearsay. Yeah, I mean, I think you know through my career, I've been in the space a long time. I spent three years at Salesforce. It's one of the best lessons I learned at Salesforce is really talking about value. Uh, you know, Salesforce didn't really talk about features much. You know what I mean? I mean, it was really a value-based sale, right? They didn't want to talk price. Um, they wanted to talk about value and how we're going to change the way you operate, right? Uh, for any, you know, customer out there, you know, anyone that might be listening, it's like, okay, I should not be, is the last thing you want to talk about because what I want to do in, in Salesforce has had a massive library of case studies. I'm going to find a company that looks just like you I'm going to tell you how we reinvented the way they market, sell, manage yeah. customers, whatever. And by the way, here's the ROI that they, they received. So if I could put this in place with you, you know, and I'm going to ask for an investment in a few minutes, um, you know, here's the ROI you're going to get. Is that appealing? They go to the CEO, like, hey, if I can get you a you know, 2,000% ROI, what's the problem? Oh, and by the way, it's only going to cost you, you know, $250,000 in, 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 in Salesforce investment. Okay, how are you going to argue against that? We agreed this is a, a valid business case. Um, it was a huge lesson learned for me. And, and, you know, things we like to, you know, work on with our clients is really talk about that value. Uh, when you talk about services with us at Avado or, you know, whatever you're looking to do from, from generating pipeline, this is a value-based um, discussion, not a, a money-based per se. It, that needs to come at some point, but it's how, how do you talk to your customers about value? Yeah, yeah, I, I heard this quote. I don't know who who said it, but the idea of how they find you is how they're going to leave you. You know, if they found you Mm. on price, you're the cheapest bottle of water in the market. Then they find a cheaper bottle of water. That's where they're going. But if they, they found you and they, and they found you because you taught them and you showed them a new way and, and they picked you with strategy over your competitor, the only ways they would leave you would be because they found someone that does that better or you stopped doing that. And now they're going to go there. Um, but it, it speaks total sense to getting out of that transactional mode. It's like you're, you're selling a product or service. You're not selling a, a little widget. You're not selling a Nike pair of shoes. It's like, these are complex sales. You can't treat them so transactional. By the way, I just jotted down that 
quote, if I, uh, do I have to give you credit every time I, I use that moving forward or if I, can I steal that? Yeah, yeah. How totally. they found you is how they're going to leave you. Yeah, totally. All right. cool. Well, I, I, I stole it from someone else um, too, so I got to figure out who, who I heard it from. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you do, let me know, and I'll I'll give uh, yeah, we'll, we'll I'll I'll give them credit back. Yeah, maybe it. someone listening can. Yeah, it's, it's a great quote. Um, you know, and and look, I but, but your value proposition can be cost, right? When you're working with clients, you could be the low cost provider, and there is a huge market there for that. Um, you know, uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about my background, but I was actually one of the co-founders of an early. Um, marketing automation company called Manicore Technology back in 2003, right? So this is back in the early days. But, you know, some of the lessons I learned there was really about, and I headed up marketing, grew up a pretty successful company, um, was that you either need to be high-end value-based or low-end cost. You never want to get caught in the middle because now yeah. you're getting people with, with enterprise needs that are, you know, that don't pay for that, but then you have this cost conscientious consumer. We, get, we, you know, looking back, I think we got caught in that middle ground. Um, there's a huge value there, but you better be sure that you're ready to keep them and keep costs top of, mo- top of mind if you're selling based on, on costs. Is, is, I mean, some of the most successful companies out there, you know, I mean, look at Walmart, right? I mean, it's, it's a cost play. Um, and that's a great value prop, but man, everything you do, live and breathe better be about cost. Yeah, totally. Yeah, getting stuck in the middle is, would be the worst, right? Because you're not competing on cost and you're not competing on the value. So what are you? You're lame. <laughs> you're ah. You're stuck. Yeah, you're mad. <laughs> you're never delivering on the ultimate value. You're never the cheapest. You're kind of stuck. And uh, another, you know, kind of lesson I, I learned earlier on in my career. But um, yeah, I mean, that's the kind of stuff, you know, Vada, we love sharing and talking about where it's your value proposition. Um, you know, and, and you know, we get a lot of really interesting and, and you know, feedback. We love kind of at least nudging people along. Well, here's some things to think about that we've seen from best practices, right? Um, yeah. You know, so that's so what makes, you know, being a consultant uh, in this space a lot of fun. Well, I, I don't know if you bumped into this, but I feel like just the nature of consulting, even in our ecosystem, it, it forces the question on you. And if you haven't intentionally answered it, you know, then it's being answered for you somehow. So like, I know, you know, Chesh, we the had cost that, piece. You know, the, the idea of the value versus the cost, you know, that sort of balance. Cause yeah. you might get quantity, but then you want quality and you have to decide as a team, like, do you want the quality or do you want the quantity? And I know right. there's partners out there that have gone for the quantity. And, and, and in my yeah. opinion, I think I, it's a much more fun, better experience for the customer, especially in services, if you go for the quality side, but you know, everyone makes their own decisions sometimes. Yeah. And, and look, there's, if customers are going for cost. That's, that's fine, but understand you're getting what you pay for, right? Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, they, 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 that consulting shop is managing cost accordingly. If you really want value, then we're, you know, again, uh, we love to really push on value and, and being the best at what we do. Um, that's, you know, there's a cost with that. And, and yeah. not on you know, there's they're both very legitimate, right? And, um, you know, the hardest part for what we do, and I imagine you see this, is how do you make sure customers understand the value prop of what we do versus yeah. yeah you could find someone a half or a quarter of the cost of what we do and that's fine look i'll introduce you to them <laughs> you know right. that's fine um there's there's a, a you know but as long as customers understand that um you know that's that, that's a you know, perfectly legitimate pa- uh, path that's a good point that that just because you've decided that you're going to go quality um or quantity mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily mean your customer knows that or knows the value of that and they may be stuck in a different mode. Like they, some people buy to your point. I mean, some people, their persona, whoever they are, they just buy based on cost and they're going to get beat up over time and time again by doing that. But unless they learn that or that maybe you teach them, okay, I know you'd like to shop me on this, but let me just tell you, that's not what we do. We're over here. You know, and I, I like, I like how you said, like I can introduce you to some other partners. Some of them are in Texas that are, that are this kind of, you know, quantity, or we could let's have a, a value conversation and really take this up a notch. Yeah. Oh, and that's where if you can prove the business case of a, a, a premier partner, um, then it makes sense, right? But if you can't, and we're just, well, we're just another, uh, you know, chop choppy kind of thing, then that makes sense. But even more importantly, when we're working with clients, is making sure when we're use, utilizing Salesforce or marketing strategies that we're helping them connect that dots, right? How are you keeping your value prop um, in front of your target audience. And that's kind of the beauty of, of what we do with Salesforce and Pardot in particular um, is just making sure that they're keeping that, that value prop out there. 
um, building relationships, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's crazy. Crazy stuff, man. Um, if you were to recommend one thing, like I think there's a lot of change management here. How, how does someone who finds yeah. himself, they're doing the quantity in the leads and they're like, we this whole conversation, they're doing that and they want to switch to, I think you even said it, like they want to switch to that conversation about better and not more. What kind of step should they take? Maybe first couple steps they should take. Yeah, no, I, I love that you're bringing up, this is more about change management at the end of the day, right? Yeah. If you are having a lead focused organization, you've now trained everybody up the chain to look at the dashboard. We have the dashboard right. here. So how many leads we got this month? <laughs> uh, um, you know, it's really about um, getting buy-in in the broader organization. So step one is really talking about well, what does the future look like, right? Start talking about, you know, some best practices that you've learned, uh, you know, looking around out there or talking with other thought leaders, um, you know, looking at analyst firm, like serious decisions, like how are they talking? What is the terminology that yeah. they're looking at things? And really just start managing up, right? If you really want to change an organization, you really need to reframe the conversation. And that's not easy. That takes a long time, right? So don't think about this as a sprint. And yes, everything's going to be done in you know, a month or two. No, this might take 18, you know, a year to 18 months. Uh, to get the executive level buy-in that you need um, because it impacts sales, impacts operations, impacts you know, executive leadership. It might, you know, uh, it impacts just across the board. Um, you know, so you really need to be thinking about you know, painting that vision, thinking about the value uh, and like, okay, here's that. And then, okay, what's your first initiative? You know, we talked a lot about ABM. Um, you know, what we've developed is just really this step-by-step. -step. It's really a five-step process to really at first talk about, well, where are you at today? Let's just take stock. Where are you at? Let's do an assessment. Uh, then, okay, what are the quick wins to start to move that and reframe the dialogue, right? So let's say we're talking about a, you know, a transactional um, you know, focus, leads, 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 and we want yeah. to get to ABM. Everyone wants to get to ABM. Okay, where are you at? What are the easy wins to start to migrate that? Now, I think you know, one of the things we like to bring with clients is, okay, you don't know Let's know where you're going, you know, how to get there, right? So, okay, here's the, the perfect vision. Let's take step by step by step to get there, right? So yeah. uh, th that whole process of really documenting a, a roadmap and how you're going to get there becomes really important. So I guess there's a short way or a long way of saying, paint a vision for the future and start to lock things off and build cons consensus around how you want to get there to move the organization in the direction you want to go. That's my thoughts. What, what about you, Casey? I love the idea of the quick wins and the psychology of it taking time. I think about like water dripping on rocks and how that like carves out when I go hiking and I see like boulders smashed in half. You know, it just took water time and time again, or like a gorge carved. You're just from water just flowing over and over again. And the idea of reframing the conversation and, and telling people what the future looks like, but continuing to tell them that I, it's mm -hmm. in my mind that it's like, I remember one time, the first time I brought like a funnel into a company, which seems bizarre, but they didn't have anything, any way of talking about any of that. And yeah. I sort of just brought in this funnel. I actually used Marketo's um, analytics workbook. Um, mm. Fascinating. It was a really, really cool book. First thing I ever experienced, like different stages and the idea of even just talking about moving people through a, you know, a factory like that. And I brought it up and brought it up, but eventually we're having a planning meeting and eventually we're using the same terms. And, but, but it, you're right. It wasn't an overnight yeah. success. And the, the thing I wrote down when you were mentioning that, <clears throat> that the, the bigger the company you're at, the longer the lead time you're going to need of saying that, of saying it over and over and over again, but eventually you'll be in it. They'll be doing it. And you've been talking about it forever. And now it's happening. It's almost like putting a dream out there. Like I want to climb Kilimanjaro. You keep saying it. And then eventually you're like, wow, I'm supposed to be going this year, um, which is now next year. But like you, yeah. you put it out there and event, you, but you have to be consistent with it. You can't waver on it or anything like that. You know, um, no, and, and that's it. That persistence and reframing, uh, you know, we've, we've done a lot of work um, with Caterpillar and Caterpillar dealers around cool. the U.S. And um, it's been really cool that we've had a really innovative um, client down um, you know, that is a $1.6 billion entity Jeez. that we've actually been a partner to around um, all their demand gen activities. So, you know, top of funnel, generating more leads, marketing operations, um, things like that. It's been a great client. We've had a relationship with them for a long time. 
but you know, to your point there, what was really cool is our executive sponsor there. He actually, he was a consultant as well, went in there and he just started reframing the conversation around, you know, the customer engagement there at this, this entity, human marketing. And little by little, he got people on board. And now not only that company talks about this journey, all of the other Caterpillar dealers around the U.S. have adopted this framework as this is the right way to do this. And so, you know, it started with this, you know, one guy taking a job as a director of marketing and essentially changed, you know, Caterpillar in you know, North America to, you know, just arguably a $40 billion entity out there. It's amazing. And it started with you know, one piece of thought leadership and, you know, a couple slides. And it's been awesome to watch, right? And, you know, obviously, you know, and from my perspective at Envato, the best part is coming in there, seeing that his vision and hopping onto that, like, okay, how do we build onto that vision and help you yeah. bring that to light? And so, you know, one relationship becomes, you know, multiple dealers. Um, and, and, you know, it's just, you know, to your point, these little things, as long as you're beating that drum and keeping it going, it can have a massive impact, um, which is great. It's really fulfilling. How to, long did that be take? Part of. How, how long are we talking uh, yeah, I mean, it's years. It, it's, you know, I mean, we've been working with them three years, at least, maybe four. Um, I know he started it probably a year ago. So, look, if we look at this now, I, I, it's been five years ago. I'd say it probably came to fruition over three years. Um, yeah, and, and also, I'll go back to my Salesforce days. Like, again, you, start, you talk about an account plan for a large yeah. corporation. It, it's years. You're, you're not talking about, you know, uh, where they're going to – I mean, yes, you, you, here's our vision for this. Here's how we're going to get there. But they're really talking years out. So you should think that way too. If you're a large entity, if you're a smaller company, you know, 50 million and below, your impact can be much faster, right? We're talking right. months, but still, it's going to take some time. Yeah, I think that's, it's really telling for people too, you know, that are listening and maybe haven't thought about it. But that that's how it, long it takes. I mean, billion dollar corporation, you're gonna you're gonna be tapping that water, you know, the Chinese water torture or whatnot. You're gonna be tap, tap, tap on that that vision for a long time. And eventually you can make baby steps um, if you're there long enough. Uh, whereas if you want a little faster conversation, you know, join a smaller company and you might be able to make changes really quick. Yeah. So yeah. It's just yeah. And you know, like people, yeah, exactly. And you know, people love smaller companies because of that. You can have a bigger impact and some people like the, Stability and, and things with bigger companies and bigger responsibilities and things that, that come with uh, bigger companies. So yeah, it, it, yeah, different journey. Totally different journey. You, you know, and I wanted to shift gears a little bit and, and you know, obviously you guys are doing great things on the technology side. How, tech, you're, you're an experienced marketer, marketing leader. How do you look at tech and, and now, you know, founder, entrepreneur, um, consultant to the stars. How do you view tech? How should people view tech and not lose their souls? A lot of marketers glom onto that latest tinkly bell word thing and they just rah, grab it and then they lose sight of where they're going, you know? Yeah, it's, uh, it does suck your soul. I'm sure we've all seen that, that yeah. chart of <laughs> 10 billion pieces of technology that we all should to know and you know i guess look i yes i have been doing this for a long time and, and really enjoy my career i think it's you know having your uh what's in your bag of tricks you know what i mean like knowing yeah. your set of tools and adding things every once in a while but you'll drive yourself nuts if you're out there buying things you've had you know uh, one client um you know that's out in the, in the west coast that they just bought everything nonstop. and to be quite honest they weren't using any of them well yeah, so it's like okay that. You know, like, here's what's in our bag of tricks. And you, if you're, you know, Mr. and Mrs. VP, uh, you know, VP of marketing, when you go into a gig, here's the five pieces of technology I use, right? I use uh, Pardot. I use Android Marketing Cloud. I know Salesforce really well. I use Qualified. I use Ringlead. Um, you know, and uh, you know, maybe another couple, couple pieces tossed in there. And that's it. Now, something else comes along. There's always innovation. But really master those things, like really know them in and out and know how to deliver the value proposition. I think, you know, a, a second myth I want to, I want to bust out there is, you know, more technology is not equal better. Um, right. You know, there's just so much, um, you know, at Salesforce, there's always, there's a formula that assumed, you know, for every dollar spent on software, it could be up to $3 spent on services. Okay. So imagine that right now, think of how many engagements you and I come into where they're like, Oh, we don't want services. We it's usually the opposite, right? Ourselves. Mentality. 
Uh, exactly. Which, Flipped ratio. You know, look, and go for it. Uh, but to manage the stuff and really grow it and build it out, right. you're going to have to spend on best practices and expertise. And that's really, um, you know, Advada, what we love to do with clients. But again, know what you're going to do, learn from implementations, learn from other engagements, bring in some experts and help with those things and then run it and, and get yeah. better at it and get better at it. Optimize, optimize, optimize. And then look, hey, we have a new problem. Let's bring something else in. That's great. You know, now your bag of tricks has gotten bigger. Um, but don't spread yourself too thin. I mean, Mark will just drive you nuts that way if, if you're <laughs> if you're you're thinking about too many, too many tools. Too many it sneaks up on you too. If you if you I mean we I think we love new things in marketing. We're always yay, new thing, variety. Um, but it, it can sneak up on you. And one of the things I wrote down was just to be aware or aware, beware, aware of that, the hidden change management that we were talking about earlier. Some of these tools are just a little helper, helper buddies, right? They're little helper drones. They help us do something here and there, a little tactical helper. But some of these things are like game changing and we may or may not be ready for it internally or even aware of it. You may not have the quick wins to afford it. Like one of the things that comes to mind is marketing automation, right? People just, oh, it's this thing. But yeah, but it actually brings your sales and marketing tools but now they're talking together which means you have to have a conversation about what you want and it, it's almost like we look take that for granted these days but there's other tools now like qualified or the web chat where mm -hmm. you think oh it's just web chat no 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 now you're getting sales doing web chat and now the deals may skip mql they may go right into the the opportunity stage how are you going to track that how is that cool is that work for your organization like there's these hidden changes you have to be aware of so it makes makes it sense to be more intentional about it you know not just kind of winging it yeah and, and i think you're 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 dead on there it's like these things have impact if you're doing them if you're doing it well if you just want to you know buy it and turn it on it's really minimal impact i mean heck just use mailchimp or, or something like that right it gets the right. job done but yeah, I mean, you know, if we could qualify, hugely powerful tool. We, we love working with them and, and it's great, but who's going to be on their working leads? Who's yeah. going to be doing it? Think about it. The, the ROI is there. Absolutely. Dude. You'd be ready to commit um, to figuring this out with sales and data. Like, you know, so many tools we've seen, we'll turn them on and oh, across the board, data is messed up. And why are my reports not oh, showing geez. up right? And, and things like that, because it's just also interlocked. We really need to think about systems and if you don't have the internal expertise on that, um, you know, really looking at someone like Envato or Cheshire to, to help you out with that is, is really important. And again, improve, get better at it. Now you know what to do the next time and you go into a new company. It's like, hey, we have our bag of tricks. I know how to do this. Awesome. Right. Um, I think that's really the value out of, of what you and I do, uh, yeah. which, I, which is a lot of fun, to be quite honest. I, I love what we do. It is a lot of fun. Um I love helping people maximize that stuff. You know, you come in and you see, and to your point with MailChimp's my story too. I say, hey, if you're not going to use this thing, you're basically treating this, this um, you know, it's like a race car, right? You're treating this Lamborghini like a Model T, you know, um, like an antique. And you, all you're doing is you're taking it on Sundays, doing your monthly email campaign and putting it back. Like you have a race car, or you're more like a Tesla, right? You have a car that could drive you to Vegas while you're reading the newspaper, maybe read the instructions, but, uh, yeah, but if you have that, but you're going to, you're going to treat it like a little jalopy. It's crazy. It's, uh, it's the best part of what we do at Irvada and also True. the worst part in the sense of like, Oh my I, I love the, you know, bringing a lot of experience to people like, Oh my gosh, let's talk about what you could do. Where are we going to go with this? Cause you know, immediately you're bringing a lot of experience to this is fun. Like, but then the downside is like when you're like, they don't really want to go anywhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, Oh, we just want to, we want to be MailChimp. Like, why are you bothering? Like stick with MailChimp. Like the emails are prettier. It's easier to operate. Um, you know, but let's talk about change management and driving value. Once you get people going, I don't know if you see this, but you know, Vado, when we start having that value based discussion, uh, okay, let's just take off a nibble. Let's just try to move the needle a little bit and they get yeah. results and they get praise. Like, Awesome. All right, let's keep going. Let's do this. Yeah, those quick needle. wins are so we important. We can this business. Oh, yeah. What? The quick wins. They're so important, you know, just to get a couple. Dude. You got to get those in. It buys you the time. 
Yeah, I mean, and in, in, in to show that you're, you're you're going in the right direction, everyone wants to see progress. You know, like, you know, the other is scenario sometimes we see is just analysis paralysis, oh, like talking yeah. too much about things that at the end of the day don't really matter when you're trying to get some level of buy-in. Like, let's just make a decision. Let's try this out. Let's do some A-B testing. Let's call this a pilot. And awesome. Let's, let's go for it and make it a success or learn from it. We'll try again. Um, you know, uh, those, those are really fun accounts to work with. For sure. You know, uh, the thing though, like, you know, you could use MailChimp and it, it's a good threat to give people, but then the, the, the thing I really want people to do is get out of that like activity marketer mindset where um, I tell the story at the time I once had a CEO ask me how many emails I sent one month. And I was like, um, a million. He's like, next month, send a million and a half. You know, I didn't know any better at the time, right. but now I realize how ridiculous. And it wasn't like we're selling a B2C thing where maybe a little brand hit might give us some more sales. No, this was like IT tech integration type software. And it's like, no, another half a million yeah. emails to the same people are probably going to get unsubscribes and drive people crazy. Uh, that's not the way to do it. But, you know, if you just are in that marketing blast mindset with one of these simple tools, there's some tracking out there. We mentioned metrics. First thing was you solved the first problem I asked you with, with like get the right metrics. You can get those with these kind of tools and with that other stuff, you can't get there from here. You like that? Slip that code in. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, you're not really educating. God, that's so frustrating. It's like, just do something. Look busy. Send just do them, something. Yeah. What you're doing. You know, drive more value. Right. And here's how I'm going to do that. Right. And, um, you know, that's, that's really where you need to reframe the conversation or we as an outside consultant, like, Hey, let's reframe this conversation. Let's take a step back. Talk about what you're trying to do. Like, mm, forget about email, forget about part off. Let's just talk about your goals as an organization. Now we can overlay and, and talk about how the technology can help you get there. And when you get that buy-in, it's a ton of fun and, and it works. Right. Um, but sometimes, you know, you're just, it's hard. You're, you're, change management you're talking about changing a culture right and if you have a ceo or that that's what they care about well you know that's what we call a sales driven organization not a marketing driven organization or marketing doesn't even have a seat at the table <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. like that's a tough culture to be in as a marketer um it's very so. tough um you know you mentioned one thing though bringing in an outside consultant you know bringing in you or me to the conversation sometimes i'll say i'm sure you've done this the exact same thing the internal person was saying jumping up and down screaming like you know like the uh the vikings are here the vikings nope no one's doing anything taking any action and then yeah. you come in and go oh yeah you're about to be invaded by the vikings you're like oh my gosh we should totally do this and build some forts and stuff and then it's yeah. like that internal person i i know you're saying that it just sometimes you know change management outside resources can come in but the good news is we'll point back to you and say this is the guy or gal she knows what's going on um she was right yeah. all along this is exactly what you should be doing yeah i mean i think you're you're dead on there it's like um we, you know our job is to make our executive sponsor successful right yeah. and whoever's you know, pay, you know in, in that regard now and there's also a huge amount of coming in as outside consultant is uh validation you know quite honestly a lot of times they have the right concepts yeah. But the devil's a the devil's in the details, but they also need someone to validate what they're thinking, right? Yeah. Here's what we're doing and how to do it, right? right. So there's the and also here's how to do maybe a little better job. You know, we've worked on this with 20 other people that look and smell just like you. Um, this might work well. Think about it, right? It's, it's a highly collaborative process. Um, but you're right that that third party validation can add a ton of, of value and, and, and you know help get things over the hump quite often. Third party validation. I love <laughs> you have the right words for it. I'm like, here's some random thought. And you're like, yeah, third party validation. That's perfect. <laughs> I need you as like my thesaurus. I'm a or consultant. I need to have my. I'm a, I'm a consultant. I need to have my buzzwords right. Right. Oh, you just need some. Third, <laughs> would you call it third a validation? Right. Third party validation. That's great. Oh, I'm, I'm uh, gonna validate your thoughts because you're dead on. Uh, yeah. Joanne. We're going to make sure your CEO knows you're, you're on and um, off we go. Let's kick some ass. Right, right. Do you do, you do anything particular? Like how, how do you support, in this case, your customer to make them successful? I think there's a lot of wisdom in just pointing at them saying, we're going to make you successful. I think that's what we're all trying to do in marketing. Is there any particular, you know, strategies you use to really help them out? 
Yeah, I mean, I think, look, at the end of the day, we all have customers, whether you're in a corporate job, right? Your customer sure. is your, your manager um, yeah, yeah. or the CEO or, or whoever you're, you know, if you're a you're VP of marketing, well, you report up, right? So mm-hmm. um, I think always aligning what I've learned you know, through, through my career is just always aligning your goals with other people's goals. And, and so I think you know, what, what right. I learned also at Salesforce was you're – you're trying to drive an agenda. How do I hook on the Bob's agenda on sales and make sure they come together, right? And so it's just aligning what you're trying to do with other people um, is, is just really important because now they're your allies. You're trying to move in the right direction. Um, I think it, you know, in my past career, I probably didn't do the best job of that. Um, so from a consulting standpoint, my job is just a really aligning, uh, you know, when we're having conversations at Avado Solutions with clients or prospects, it's like, what are you trying to do? Let's take a step back. And then let's talk about what that looks like, what success look like, and then, okay, here's what we would propose to do going forward, right? Um, bringing that solution to the table, not letting them kind of dictate the terms. Now, they're going to have their own thoughts, which are great. You tell me, what, what are you looking to do and why are you interested in this, right? So our job is to really help connect the dots, think best practices, bring uh, and understanding what they're trying to do and the company's trying to do and, and run with it. If we could do that, it's a great relationship that lasts years. Um, and that's what I really enjoy is just really that sense of partnership uh, and working with companies, you know, and, and helping them get where they, they want to go. Right. Because right. um, now we're aligned on what success is. The sky's the way the limit. Yeah. I love that. So you got to align with them because um, you may have your own thoughts of what success should be for them, but understanding what their, their trigger phrase is or what the, what they're actually trying to march toward internally to keep their job or to, you know, move up in the world or make their company successful. It's good to mm-hmm. align that, not just sort of make one up for them. No. And, and that's, that's, I think you're, you're hitting it there. It's like, um, you know, you use trigger word. Uh, you know, what are the words they're using? Like anything yeah. we're talking about, we need to use their words, right? What are your boss's words? You know, just make sure you're defining that. And, and as you're talking about your strategy, like, Oh, Bob, this is what I heard. Um, this is how I'm going to help you get to X, Y, Z. And now you might be still doing the same, you know, same conversation and, and thing, but you're just framing it in, in a way that's very productive. Um, and makes him or her know that you're, you're all on the same page and you're going to help them be successful. Yeah. Nothing makes people happier than hearing their own name or their own words back at them for sure. Yeah. Amazing. And now you're a team. You're not butting heads or, or, you know, not helping them get, where they need to go. Now you're a team. I love that. Where does you know, it- at the end of the day, people, yeah, the, 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 let me just close off. I mean, the other day, people want solutions, not problems, right? So yeah. help them understand what their problems are and give them a solution path. They're, again, this is corporate. This is, this is consulting. This is it, right? Bring them solutions to their problems. And they're like, oh, my goodness. Um, yes, what can we do? Right. Right. It starts by listening to them. Where, where do you, where do you see all this going? What's the future? Anything exciting coming around the bend tech wise or strategy wise that we should keep our eyes open for, or maybe run away from? <laughs> yeah. You know, I think, um, God, there's so many exciting things going on there. I mean, we recently, um, uh, launched a partnership with qualified. Like I know you have yeah, uh, that yeah. conversational. Those great guys, um, right? Those guys are aspect. so cool. Love, um, you know, Craig and Sean, I've worked with them for you know, decades back at their Salesforce days. Uh, you know, Salesforce made an investment in them. It's always good news. And, you know, you can get a feel where Salesforce is going with that. Um, <laughs> and that relationship, right, that's a really important thing. Right. Um, so we use the technology ourselves and we're ramping up to become experts in it, um, you know, to, to, to figure out how to generate more business. And, you know, for those of you that aren't aware, check out, uh, you know, qualified.com. It's, it's a pretty cool solution, very conversational and you know, it's linking that Salesforce and Pardot data and, and what they're doing. It's really a competitor direct uh, for, for the, made for the Salesforce world. Um, you know, the, the one thing I, I still, most people don't have that, um, you know, I think it's kind of a table stakes game. There's some sort of data enrichment, data cleanup tool, you know, yeah. from a marketing perspective. It's so much about data, data, data. And, um, you know, we, we have a partnership with a company called Ringlead. Um, yep. we, we like people to check them out. We use them. Um, internally, and it's a lot of augment, you know, enrichment and cleanup, right? I mean, we can't talk about ABM without cleaning data. Um, so don't even go down that path without talking about data, and you can't have duplicates, and it really needs to be managed tightly. Um, 
So honestly, a lot of this for me, um, KC is just using what you got. Um, well, um, right. People struggle to do that before you start buying new things, like make sure you're killing it. So from the new front, um, you know, looking at, at the qualified folks on the, on the, the you know, kind of like, let's use what we got. I mean, part of, there's just always opportunities there to drive more value, but then uh, data enrichment with like a qualified or, or a reach force, um, you know, those are really interesting tools to check out. Yeah. So, you know, it's interesting. You're right. It's table stakes, but not everybody has them. And man, if your data isn't, on board if it's not really up to date you're not going anywhere you're going in circles you're going to embarrass yourself i right? going back to that make your boss sure. look good um it something happened the other day where someone received the wrong email someone's you know the ceo's niece or something like that and there was hell to pay right just because data yeah. was not clean and honestly very few accounts we go into have some sort of enrichment thing. Usually it's we're bringing it with us and saying you need to look yeah. at something like this. Um, but, you know, it's just there now. And that even gets into data duplication issues. We like to look at, you know, Salesforce native functionality or a Clodingo um, for managing those things. Or, you know, again, Ringlead um, you know, can, can help manage those things as well. Yeah. Yeah, and really just get a partner. We use um, Inside View, those guys. I don't know if you know those guys. Mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah whatever tool, like just get something so that you you don't you know, we, we had this um um one story that got to us um from someone who had made a snafu and um but this is before working with us to to uh, to put a little legal phrase in there. Um they their sales team would always mark their their um contacts and leads in the first name bucket they would they would do things to know what was wrong with the lead right and so right. It, and if they said unsubscribe me or they said something like don't ever email me again they would delete the email address right so all these terrible processes and, uh, okay delete the email yeah. address or someone's not here they put like not here so it'd be like adam not here cheshire or something right <laughs> um but they had someone where the person died and so they put like jim is dead oh, so they, no. And sure enough, no one unsubscribed them. So that that team received an email, you know, forwarded to someone on the team was like, Jim is dead, Smith. Come to our webinar. And they were just like, guys, this is so there's like this is so un oh, no taste no. to this. It's terrible. And they got a bad rap. But it's like, oh, that don't manage it that way, man. Just clean up that data. Yeah. That's awful. Yeah, so many snafus, uh, to your point. It's um it's hard, but you know, best practices, people need to be figuring that out. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and there's some good tools out there, right? Don't, you don't need to spend a ton. Yeah. Obviously the, the administration of it is where it can be, you know, more time consuming, but look, any decent Salesforce administrator can learn it. You can pay just for some, some outside hours, you know, this yeah. is where people, you know, we, we did some work around that, just general administration of Salesforce, part out, things like that. That's yeah. a world of a difference, right? Um, Gosh, it saves you embarrassment and, and, and things like that. It's money well spent. I mean, segmentation is so key, right? It's just like, it's number one on my checklist is making sure you know who you're talking to and what do you want to say um, and, and not yep. blending those groups all together to make a mushy, you know, send all campaign, right? Not only is it the, the monthly campaign, but it's a monthly campaign to everyone and treating everyone, customer, VIP, IT and marketing person all the same. And they are not all the same. It's crazy. Hey, question for you. Who are you? Yeah. How did you become the wizard of marketing and tech and all these things? Did you, did you take us back? Take us back in time, like little Christopher days. Did you always know you're going to be in marketing? Yeah. No, God, no. Uh, yeah, I have actually a pretty <laughs> interesting story uh, that got me, um, you know, to Envato Solutions. So, yeah, I, um, from a, a town in North Jersey uh, called Randolph, New Jersey. Okay. And, um, That's why no you Texas went on accent. Study. Yeah, yeah, no, it's more of a Jersey. If you really get me going, it'll become more of a Jersey accent real fast. Oh, get me started, Casey. Uh, yeah, and, and you know, so I went to the University of New Hampshire and actually, uh, which you're familiar with, obviously, and yeah. uh, studied engineering uh, there. I got my degree in civil engineering and God, you know, uh, you know, I picked my my major in some sort of arbitrary way i liked environmental things i saw a picture in a magazine of some dude taking a water sample and i'm like i want to study that 
a little did I know how, you know, it would be a tough road. And, and um, yeah, so I eventually, but it wasn't really my calling. Um, and, so were you in like the uh, bogs of yeah, New Hampshire, so, just getting water samples from estuaries and stuff? Uh, we did do some of that. That was cool stuff. Like, I liked that. You know oh, what I mean? Okay. But, um, you know, I, I went out and studied that, you know, or got a job in that and basically, um, you know, realized that I really was more into tech and, and wanted to help. I don't know. I, I guess at that point, I didn't really realize I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Um, I think in my heart, I, I, I did, but it put some, some life changes to really push me toward that, uh, that I'll, I'll tell you about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, studied engineering and did that and really had an epiphany. I was at a large engineering firm. I saw people that were probably, uh, you know, my age now um, saying, gosh, I'm 20 something. I don't want to be doing that when I'm, you know, 40 something. Right. Um, you know, they're doing the same job. So uh, I packed up and went and got my, earned my MBA at University of Texas down here in Austin. And, um, you know, it was, it was funny, you know, people from Jersey, like, what the hell are you doing moving to, moving to Texas? Like, yeah, why, you know, they why, the, why there? And, Why'd you pick that one? You know, it was it was uh, it was it was a top program for for tech and marketing, um, and really wanted to change the scenery. You know, I kind of hit the, you know my late twenties and it's like, all right, what do I really want to do? And so, you know, I'd spent my life on the East Coast and just was ready to kind of spread my wings a little bit more, right? And um, you know, it was it was phenomenal, and uh, you know, it's so much so that I actually um, uh, decided to stay here. So, uh, Envato is is headquartered here in Austin, and. Um, yeah, so you know, I, I I wanted to get into tech, and um, I became a brand manager. At, you know, from an engineering perspective, I actually became a brand manager at um, AMD, which is a semiconductor company. Um, yeah. And you know, so I kind of used the engineering degree to kind of bridge into marketing. I'm like, oh, this would be pretty cool, and and learned a ton um, just about messaging and positioning and, and things like that. And so I did that for about three years. Um, and then one of my buddies from, from MBA school um, had started a, a startup and he's like, listen, I got some amazing stuff here. This is 2002. He's like, I can track, I could send someone an email and I could connect that at, um, the email with the cookies, uh, with JavaScript on there. And I could say, I could tell you what people are doing on their website and I could track people and I could send them emails based on their behavior. And this is really going to be cool. Um, do you want to come be my marketing guy? Uh, I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll be a marketing guy. Uh, so this is 2003, and, and the company was called Manicor Technology. Um, and it was the beginning of marketing automation. We were one of the first players out there. Um, it was, uh, you know, Manicor. It was uh, Mark Organ and the Eloqua team. It was Adam um, and Derek and, and the guys uh, and Dave Cummings from the Pada team. Yeah. Um, it was the Marketo team with John Miller and those guys. And we were going around to these little events and all got to know each other saying, this is going to be huge. You people got to buy this stuff. And lo and behold, people did buy it. Um, and so I, you know, my job as head of marketing was I built up all the marketing efforts around this space, trying to explain best practices, um, and really got to know all the players in the space and, and really had a, a fabulous time um, doing it. Um, and just learned so much uh, about, you know, Pardot and Eloqua and just best practices. It was just a, a life-changing kind of chapter in my life. Man. Um, so you're in early. You're in, and, you're in, and he was just like, "Hey, come on, man! I, you know, you just got your degree. Let's just let's." Do, so you just like boots to the ground kind of thing. Just get going, get started. Yeah, I mean, 2003. I mean, uh, I joke when you know we're having sales calls. Like, listen, I mean, some people you could call me a grandpa, I guess, to the space. Um, you know, but I, uh, you know, we were arguing like, you know, about whether you could have cookies on the show, or cookies going to be illegal when we were out there raising money. It was like, can you put cookies on people's machines. Um, you know, that was a, a very valid concern that, that you know, people had and investors had and, and you know, across the board, mm-hmm. um, you know, Salesforce, we had, I remember we were talking to some VCs and they like, we don't think cloud is going to really take off. Um, <laughs> you know, so if you ever think of, of believing a VC, uh, don't do it half the time. They don't even know what they're talking about. Um, and you know, Salesforce was a hundred million dollar company. So, uh, you know, it was those first stream forces and it was a ton of fun. I mean, uh, to be part of that is super exciting. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. So, but things got really interesting. Uh, it got interesting. So I eventually left that company. Um, it was sold off eventually. Um, and I went to Salesforce as a senior director of marketing. Um, you know, had a lot of connections there. Did that for about three years. Um, 
loved it, just learned so much, uh, but really wanted to get back out to building something. And um, I started, I went to a startup for a little bit and um, you know, had a life-changing event. Um, you know, the, the, in the background, which I haven't told you about yet, was in 1999, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Um, really? And yeah, so Jeez. this is something I've been managing in the background. It was, it was called atypical. So not totally benign. It's not totally, it's not malignant. Uh, it's just kind of there, but it's more aggressive and grows back a lot. So I've had um, brain surgery multiple times, basically every three to four to five years. I've had surgery or radiation or something. Um, but in, you know, this is, uh, you know, gosh, this is you know, about five years ago now. I um, it was at a startup. Uh, I was at a company and I was going in for a routine checkup and um, over at MD Anderson, which is a phenomenal place, and going to see my um, my neuro oncologist. Everything had been fine for multiple years, and uh, he was like, "I was at, you know, uh, he was like, you know what? Unfortunately, the tumor's going back again. Uh, mm-hmm. We need to talk about. Uh, you need to go meet with your neurosurgeon, and we should also talk about long term radiation this go around. You know, I, this was my fourth fourth craniotomy, as they say in the biz, which is a lot, uh, a lot of a lot of. Uh, and uh, just, I was, I was heartbroken. I was you know, tired of it. Um, yeah. you know, I've been living with this um, for a long time. And I'm driving home, and I get a call from my boss, and it says, uh, we're letting you go. Um, and it was one of those, like, oh, shit moments in your life, right? Um, the company was, uh, yep, was a bunch of layoffs, and the company wasn't doing well. So um, it was, you know, I basically was, you know, within... Three hours was told, yeah, you're going to need brain surgery again. You're going to get, you know, have weeks and weeks of radiation and you lost your job. Um, and I, you know, I was, you know, and the you know, breadwinner of my family. I right. have three children, um, live in Austin, have a, a really good life here. It's like, oh shit, now what? Right. Um, so the next day I said, well, what am I going to do? Um, well, I know marketing automation really well. I, I helped start that space back in 2003. I know right. Salesforce really well. And I know marketing really well. I'm going to go out there and, and start a company that really focuses on making marketers wildly successful with Salesforce. Nice. Um, because I really saw that as an unmet need. And that day I started Vado Solutions. Um, and since then, we've been you know, really doubling year over year and just seeing this awesome growth. Um, and, you know, it was really from that challenging chapter of my life came something really wonderful um, that I, I love doing. We have a great team uh, scattered across the, the U S now and um, yeah, we're, we're flourishing. So you had to, so you didn't have to, you decided to create this thing while going through all the radiation surgery type stuff. Like it was, my thought was like, how do I pay for all this shit? You know, like, insurance and co-pays and all that like you're getting uh, well yeah yeah i mean yeah i mean i guess you know immediate needs um, I, I was lucky enough to have good insurance uh, okay. but yes i can understand that that would be uh, a thing but yeah i mean i started the company the next day i uh you know i had up think six weeks of radiation in houston so i was living in houston um you know, had brain surgery and i was working uh making calls you know in between things um you know it's not a necessity and to, to be quite honest um I've had two craniotomies since then, so that's, I don't know, five, six times now, and I run Envato through that. Um, wow. You know, it's a part of my life. I, I manage it, and, um, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, one of our, our core values as a company is really pure perseverance, right? We explain that to uh, yeah. every engagement we go into, and I don't think, you know, I don't usually explain to um, our clients why that is such a core value of ours, right? Because challenges are going to come up. They come up in projects all the time, but there's no reason why we can't get through them together. And it's really from my personal experience that, um, you know, look, I've survived, um, you know, my last go around, unfortunately I had a, I had a rough stint. I got a brain infection actually, and Jeez. I had to learn to rewalk. Um, really? so I have a, a limp now and things like that. So I'm doing PT and things like that and you know, running a company and that's okay. Right. Life goes yeah. on and, and uh, I'm enjoying the ride and, uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's been great. I, you know, and being up, so I was kind of an accidental entrepreneur. Um, and it's, it's been a wonderful experience. I mean, 
not the brain tumor piece, but it's yeah. helped create this, this great life and, and a great team that I lean on all the time. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I love my team, you know, without them, I, you know, this is a team effort, right? I need to lean on them sometimes and they lean on me and, and we're successful. I can totally see that being a core value and why it should be. And one that actually means something. I think a lot of companies make the mistake of throwing 30 words on the wall and no one remembers any of them, but mm -hmm. you, you have one or two or three and they have a good story behind it. And there's a reason why, and you actually care about it and you expect other people to care about it. And that, that makes all the difference in the world. That's, that's some powerful stuff that you're leveraging that. I, I can only imagine you're getting an email. Where's my email campaign as you're like, you are trying to, <laughs> straight after having some more radiation or something yeah i mean it all just becomes so relative right i mean and yeah, then, look, yeah. stress is stress we're all under a lot of stress and and i respect that and people my job and, and my team's job is talking people off the edge right talk about a path and how to solve problems right and you know problems are big and small really you know depends and um you know it, it is kind of laughable when I'm out there, uh, you know, trying to learn to rewalk and move my left leg. And I have someone that's just really upset about, you know, if you know, didn't render properly or, you know, it's like, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't mean that in a degrading way. I certainly understand that, but you know, it just becomes so relative in your life. Um, when you have realized there's a lot more to it than just, um, uh, you know, emails. And I know you don't mean it in a degrading but, you way, know, uh, but I do. <laughs> Come on people. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, but it, it's a good reminder. And I think some of the blessings of going through challenging things, and I've never that level, I, it makes me wonder, like, but usually it puts things in perspective. Like for me, it was like war. Like that was like, oh, I really appreciate mm -hmm. that. Now, do you have like a newfound appreciation for things or what kind of, I mean, where, where's the lemonade? It sounds like there's some pretty tart lemons in there, but is there some lemonade from all of this? And the, obviously the core value for sure. Yeah, it's amazing where the, the, the lemonade comes from. Um, you know, it's kind of living with this condition. Um, you know, chances are I'll need surgery again someday. Um, I walk, um, you know, I have a limp and I walk slower. Um, but, you know, I, I found that, uh, yeah, you know, I, can, I just, you know, I walk slower, so I'm able to walk slow and just take things yeah. in, right? Um, you know, during this whole, um, you know, look, I am an entrepreneur, I'm a tech guy, I'm used to be boom, boom, boom. Well, you yeah. know what? There's no walking fast now for me. And so I go on hikes with my sons, um, and I walk slow and that's okay. Right. I can enjoy that moment with them. I went away with my uh two my I have, I have three kids, I'll tell you about them in a minute because I gotta get them recognized. Yeah. Um, you know, we went away for um, you know, just a, a ranch down here in Texas and we played <laughs> we played tennis together. Um, and you know, there's no running around for that. So I have my little guy in back of me catching the balls and throwing them back. But nice, you know, the, the ability to just be like goof around and you know, whereas you know, I probably would have been ultra competitive about things in the past. Well, you know, there's just things I can't be competitive about now. And I need to let those things go. But honestly, I had so much fun like playing tennis with them and spending time with them that you know, when you when you have a condition like this, you just once you're, uh, you know, you're at peace with it, it's like, there's, there's always, you know, uh, you know, lemonade there. And, and, you yeah. know, it's, it's, it's wonderful in that regards. No, I love that, man. So is it just like you, you go into surgery and you wake up and your legs aren't nearly as cool as they used to be kind of thing? They just. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's weak. You, know, you get weakness and things like that. Uh, um, you know, the, where the tumor is located, it's right next to my, um, uh, I won't get into the overly technical things, but yeah, it's where my last leg is, and so the coordination goes away. And this last go around was was really bad, right? Um, right. And usually, you know, it, it had been good, and and you know, I still moved around fine, and, and most people wouldn't notice that I had issues. Uh, but now there's no there's no denying that I don't have a, a leg challenge. But you know what? It's it's all good. It really, you know, anyone that needs perspective, come hang out with me and the Anderson for a little bit. Um, but it's also, you know, I, I'm really, it's really interesting for me. I mean, you know, like the, thing, the stuff used to terrify me. I mean, yeah. and, you know, thoughts of death and things like that. And now, honestly, brain surgery has kind of become like this scheduled thing. I, I, I don't know if that's good or bad or not, but right. it's like, oh, you know, we had, a, we had to have an impromptu, um, you know, my wound wasn't healing right on my head last go around. Went to the neurosurgeon and he's, he's like, ah, 
I was, you know, my scalp wasn't healing right. He's like, well, you know, we're going in the operating room like tomorrow morning at 8.30. My wife wasn't there. I'm like, it's like you want to just bang it out then? I'm like, yeah, let's just bang it out. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. <laughs> all right. So you know, I, I called my wife, like, you know what? I'm going in for surgery you know, tonight. Uh, I'll drive myself home tomorrow. And, and we're like, okay, whoops, you know, that's fine. You know, we just got to deal with it. And, and it becomes it's part of our lives. And, you know, I have a really strong, uh, wife and, um, and, and, you know, I, I, I feel really strong and my kids are strong, right? I mean, yeah. uh, they're resilient. We get through this as a family and, uh, you know, I'm really proud of how, how we do. But, you know, from a Nevada perspective, just, I love the fact that, you know, my team is, is there to support me and I'm there to support them. And these core values just, just emanate, um, in terms of everything we do, right? This is how we roll. Um, and, and it's, it's life changing in that regard. Oh Yeah. That's, that's some powerful stuff, man. Uh, to have a team, you know, your family, your home team, and then your, your away team, your uh, company team, all like you know, supporting each other and you and you're supporting them. It just, that's, that's the way business should be, you know? And well, and you, you, you missed one small that Honestly, the team that I learned to just probably the most is my, my, my tumor team. Really? <laughs> you know, the Anderson, you know, like, well, you know, I mean, it's just an amazing thing to have like a trusted you know, neurosurgeon that I've had a relationship with for decades. Right. Um, you know, his nurse practitioner and PA, and then just, just an amazing operation to see like you trust them with everything. Right. And they're my go-to people and they get things done and they would lean on each other in amazing ways. Like, wow. um, you know, my certain neurosurgeon is just has amazing gifted hands, but, the people that support him are just phenomenal. I mean, and that they're the ones that honestly really make stuff happen behind the scenes, you know, right. like they're just, they're just amazing. And so, you know, partnership is another one of our core values. Like I want to be that aspirationally with our customers. Like we want to be your partner and they're my partners. They're we're in this together, you know, like they know my family, you know, I had, I had a clean checkup just the other day and that was great news. And, you know, I have my kids on the phone, I'm like, hey, these are them. This is Dr. DeMonte and Susan. I know all about, you know, it's just really developed this straight bond, you know, this bond. And that's really what I enjoy about what we do. And with my team and, and our, our customers and our partners, just the best part of, of what we do is it's really the people, people aspect of it. Right. Um, yeah. Well, I, I mean, this, this kind of ties into, um, you know, a question we like to, like to ask everybody which is if you could go back in a time machine and I may have one in New Hampshire. So when you come up, when you drive up, by the way, uh, I love walking slow and I have to remind my kids to like, I'm like, I'm like a moseyer, you know, I'm like, I don't have any place to go. Yes. Right. Like, so I'm just going to mosey. I, I can go fast, but I don't want to. Mosey. You know, anytime you want to go hiking or walking super slow, I'm totally game. Um, but uh, if you can go back right. in time in a time machine that may be here in New Hampshire, and talk to yourself, usually right around the start of your career, maybe you just graduated with that undergrad degree. What kind of things would you advise yourself to think, do, feel, any of that? Oh. Yeah, you know, honestly, I don't think I'd listen to myself. Um, you know, I'll, I'll say that up front. But, you Wait, know, you would life has taught What'd me. You say? I, wouldn't listen, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't listen to myself. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, you're 20-something. You think you got it figured out. And, um, you know, and, and, I, and I get it. But. You know, look, I, I think the big thing is um, things will work out. You know what I mean? That's the yeah. number one thing. And you'll fail and bad shit will happen to you. And I think, you know, having you know, having kids right now, you know, that's one of the things I really talk, you know, talk about. Like, life has its challenges. And, you know, yes, you're 20-something. Things look, might look rosy now, and they probably do, unless you've had other chapters. But things are going to happen, and you're going to lose your job. And... Um, or um, you're not going to get the promotion, or you're going to get a brain tumor, and you're not going to be able to walk, um, and things are going to happen, and you know what? You will get through it, and uh, you'll be better for it, and you might not believe that, and no one would, I would never believe that, um, but you know, great things have come from uh, my, um, my life experiences. Uh, I met my wife um, because of my brain tumor, um, I started Vado because of my brain tumor. Wait, I've you met her because of the brain met. tumor? Yeah, yeah. Um, we, yeah. Um, you know, and we have you know, three wonderful children because of it. Yeah, my wife and I, um, we actually first met at University of New Hampshire. And then 
uh, reconnected, you know, about a decade later when I was re-diagnosed, we were friends, we went our own way. And I was, I was catching up with a friend about my challenges. She's like, you know what? You should really catch up with, with Amy. We we're all really good friends. She'd love to hear from you. She was living in Vermont. And you know what? I, I really would like that. And you know, Amy was having some challenges in her life. And we just started talking. And, you know, we had this bond about life doesn't go the way you think it will. Yeah, right? right. So we were both in our, our early 30s. And life had given us crap um and just stuff to deal with and we became best friends and eventually got married and i kind of started to move to texas and here we are we have uh three amazing children uh one is my daughter maddie who i'm going to give them hat tips sorry i've got yeah, the microphone give them shout outs. away yeah i'm going to shout out to maddie uh who is a junior at university of arkansas who's at summer camp right now killing it over there and then i've got liam my uh, 12 year old who is a budding entrepreneur. If you're looking for a lawn mowing service and you're down here in Austin, Texas, <laughs> uh, check out two boys and a lawn mower, two boys and a mower. And then I've got my, my darling little boy, uh, Patrick, who's going to be nine and he is amazing at games. So anyway, we have them now and I have a motto. I have a great life and um, I'm really, I appreciate the chance to share that with you, Casey. This yeah. has been great. Absolutely, man. I will definitely put a put a shout out to the two boys in a mower. We'll link right to them in our uh, show notes from the show. <laughs> <laughs> I will. He's he's building a website. He's amazing. He's got my entrepreneurship blood. He's going to um, he's out there hustling as we speak. He's he's uh, he's an ambitious guy. He's I think he's uh, I'm hoping maybe he'll take over Nevada someday. I don't know. We'll see. Have you asked him what happens when he hires a a third boy with a mower? <laughs> two boys and two mowers. <laughs> It's called a rebrand, and that sucks. I've have, I've done that many times. I don't it's not fun. He's gonna need a new logo. He's gonna need uh, he's gonna need some more stuff. So uh, don't do it at any cost. Right. Seriously. Hey, um, where can people connect with you? What other kind of links and you know social sites? Yeah. Or- yeah. So um, you can check us out in VadoSolutions.com. We have you know if you're using Parda, we have tons of resources there and templates and best practices like you. We love sharing what we know up there. Um, uh, we have uh, two social accounts. One is at C Doran, D O R A N, is my personal one. Um, and then at Envato Solutions is kind of more of our, uh, our corporate one. And, and um, you know, we share a lot of things there. So check that out. Um, and then I'm really active on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is my kind of my, um, my, my social media channel of, of choice. So feel free, reach out, link to me. We'll share some information. I'd love to hear about your all story. I'm, you know, I love personal connections and meeting with people at Dreamforce and um yeah so appreciate the uh yeah the opportunity to connect with you Kishi. absolutely man one of these days we'll get a chance to hang on to dreamforce now that we've been on a podcast together we just need a dreamforce to actually happen and then we'll be good well i'm, I'm headed up to the hampshire uh thursday we're driving 27 hours or something like that straight on through so not oh, straight wow. through but we're gonna be making our way so i'll i'll, uh, I'll ping you out up there if we have some time for a hike yeah. Oh, yeah, man. I'm trying like to trying to do those. Um, the 48. You know, the ones above 4,000. Yeah, dude. Um, you gotta remember what I just told you. I'm not. I'm not uh, hyping up that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be finding the carriage trail or something nice and easy. But we so, can we can mosey and it'll be awesome. We can talk about the state of the world and how uh, how how we can make it a better place. Hopefully. Well, man. And I'll just throw an extra gallon of water in my backpack, and then I'll be slower than you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's what I like to hear. Well, Christopher, man, this has been a blast. Thank you so much for coming on here and sharing your story, but also your, you know, your marketing strategy and your outlook on things. Yeah, Casey, I really uh, appreciate the chance to get to know you again. I really respect what you've done. We've been talking uh, around each other for for years, and and it's great to get to know you and the great work you're doing at Cheshire. So uh, love to do it again sometime. Hey, man, absolutely. Maybe we'll do it local up here in New Hampshire if you're still here. That'd be fun. There you go. Live free or die, baby. That's it. That's it. New Hampshire is waiting for you. We'll welcome you with open arms. <laughs> I don't know. I'm coming from Texas, so don't tell anyone I'm coming. It's a pretty much a mess down here right now. But we are quarantined. We're very safe. I'm in my house. I'm not doing anything. So right. let us in. No, it's all good. Um, cool, man. Well, hey, this is fantastic. And you know, for those people listening, if you've learned something, and I freaking know you have because I have two pages of notes over here. Then, uh, then share this with someone else. And I mean, we talk about so many things, the long play, the ABM side, what are you doing with what you've got? And there's so many messages from this, you know, take your thoughts, you put your thoughts 
into, you know, into words and then put your takeaways on LinkedIn or any of these platforms, share this stuff, tag Christopher and I, and we will retweet you and we'll comment back, start a conversation with the people that you, that are following you and, and really be a thought leader that way. And this is the best way to not only listen, but then share outside of that. And, and again, man, thanks for coming on here. This has been fantastic. Yeah, I appreciate it, Casey. We'll talk to y'all soon. Sounds good. For those listening, this has been the Hardcore Marketing Show. We'll catch you all next time.